So let's turn to no other place, amen, than the faith chapter, which is verse 1, amen? Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. So dear precious Holy Spirit, we invite you and yield our hearts to be our teacher. Magnify the name of Jesus in every page, in every letter, in every dot, in the name of Jesus. We welcome you and we invite you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord showed me something the other day called substantiation. Say substantiation. Say substantiation. Now, you may not know what that word means, but it's in the Bible, and I'm going to show you what it means. It's really fascinating and incredible. Now, look at me real quick before we get into Hebrews 11.1. 1. We human beings are fascinating creatures, and I say creatures lightly. Amen? Um, we want to see. We want to feel. We want to touch something, right, to know that it's true. Did you ever hear somebody use the expression before? I won't believe it until I see it. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So in order, in order for man, is everybody in here man and woman? Everybody in here human being? There's nobody from, there's no Martians in here, are there? Okay, good. In order for you, since you have already declared your moral, mortality, in order for you to be proven or to prove to you that something is real, you must smell it, taste it, touch it, feel it, hear it. That's the way that you are wired as human beings. For example, the sun cannot be proved its existence unless you see it or feel its warmth. Amen? Um, fear. Fear cannot be understood unless you have felt fear, right? If somebody says to you and said, gosh, I was so fearful the other day, I sweat like bullets, and you had never experienced fear before, you have a very difficult time understanding it. How about grief? Grief is also something that you have all felt before. For example, Nobody in this room will ever understand the pain of losing someone that you love close to you, like a husband or a wife or a child. You have absolutely no idea. You can, you can imagine what it must feel like. You can appreciate or tell that person, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss, but truly you will never understand grief to that extent until you yourself feel it. I never, ever, ever appreciated or understood when somebody would tell me, I just lost my mother, I just lost my father. I know, I, I, I felt bad for them, but I never, ever understood the depth of pain and the sense of mourning until I lost my dad. So grief has to be felt as well. That's the way that we're wired. And faith is the same. Are you awake? Faith is the same. Now, you cannot teach someone faith. Faith cannot be taught in a church. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, and we're going to spend some time on just this one little teeny tiny verse. Amen? Are you there? You have your Bibles open. If not, look up at the screen, and we will read Hebrews chapter 11 together out loud, starting in verse number 1, out loud. One, two, three. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. First of all, Faith is not a magic wand or pixie dust. That is not what faith is. In Hebrews it says there is only one thing which pleases our God, and it is faith. This is the only place in the Bible where faith is defined. 
This is the only verse in the Bible that you are parked in right now where faith is defined. Now, let me just clarify again. You cannot be taught this. Your ears cannot perceive this. To substantiate faith means you have to feel it. You have to feel it. Can I hear an amen? amen. Let me read this to you in another translation. It is not now, comma, faith. It is now faith. Now faith is the substantiation. Say substantiation. Say it again. Now faith is the substantiation of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Now we have got to explain this so that I can hear a big shout of hallelujah. Let me explain to you how important this word substance is or substantiation. Same word. And it's very difficult, folks, to translate that word substantiation to the English language. But remember, the original writer of Hebrews did not write in King James, and he did not write in English, and he did not write in Greek. Amen. Amen. The word substantiation means this. It means the capacity to make something real to you. It means, substantiation means to make something real to you. Let's read it in Hebrews 11, 1 again. Now faith is the Use the right word, is the, now faith is the substantiation of things hoped for. All right. Music. How is music substantiated to you? All right, watch this. Was that music substantiated to you? You didn't hear the music? Really? How about that? So, so that music was not substantiated to you. Why? You didn't hear it. Was that music substantiated to you? How? So the music was substantiated to you by hearing. You see this bag in my hand. What color is that? But if you were to tell a blind person that I'm holding a red bag in my hand, they would say, what is red? How would you describe red? If they've never seen red, how would you describe red? Pastor was wearing a gray sports coat. They would say, I can't substantiate gray or red because I've never seen it. See, the eyes, the eyes cannot substantiate sound. The, the hands cannot substantiate sound. But I can substantiate my love for Marcia 
by hugging. <laughs> that is the substantiation of my love to her. And she felt love. Are you with me? Only the ears can substantiate the sound. Only the eyes can substantiate red. Do you understand now the word substantiation? Here is my shower revelation, number one. Therefore, it is one thing for objects to exist. It is another thing for the existence of these things to be substantiated to you. God exists, yet people do not believe in him because he has not been substantiated through the five senses. Now faith is the substantiation of things hoped for and the evidence of things yet not seen. I will only believe in miracles when I can see them. No, faith is the substantiation of things hoped for and the evidence of things yet not seen. I'll say it again. It is one thing for objects to exist. But it is another thing for the existence of these objects to be substantiated to you. This is what faith is. This is why this cannot be taught. There are millions and millions of objects on this earth. Are you awake? Are you awake? I feel the Holy Spirit here. There are millions of objects on this earth, but the reality of them is dependent upon you substantiating them. Love was not substantiated until I met the love of my life. Hate was not substantiated until I hated someone. Grief was not substantiated to me until I lost my mother and my father. Look, the same is true with faith. If you have eyes, you can substantiate the beauty of a pink one, of this red bag. But if you do not have eyes, you cannot substantiate this. But let's just say a person was born blind or born deaf. And they could never hear or see color all the days of their life. Yet how is it that they can substantiate sound? How is it that they can substantiate inside Sight. If you tell them how beautiful this gray jacket is, the blind will say, what is gray? So thus, we cannot substantiate faith by the things of this world. We cannot understand nor substantiate faith in a living God with these five senses because that would limit those people that were either blind, deaf, or dumb. The real dumb people are not the people that cannot hear or see. The real dumb people are those that can see and those that can hear but still do not perceive or substantiate God by faith alone. Are you with me? Are you enjoying this, Louis? Interesting how a hearing impaired person still can substantiate the beauty of a song and sit there not hearing what you hear and still substantiate the beauty of a song. Because these people are not hearing with their ears. They're hearing with their heart. Now faith 
is the substantiation of things that we hope for. Say God is real. How has he been substantiated in your life? Anybody here seen Jesus in the last 24 hours? Huh? Huh? Who has seen Jesus in the last 24 hours? You felt him. So faith in Jesus was substantiated not with these eyes, but you felt him. Are you with me? Are you enjoying this? All right, look up here. The reality of God is so real, I can taste him. But he will never be real to you unless you can substantiate him by that's why we look at people with this gaze and wondering what in the world is going on with them. Are you awake? Are you listening? Read it out loud. Come on. With hands uplifted, say, Now faith is the substantiation of things that I hope for and the evidence of things I have not seen. Ah, the eyes cannot substantiate the things of God. So close your eyes. The ears cannot substantiate the things of God, so cover your ears. Your hands cannot substantiate the touch of God, so close your hands. And your nose cannot substantiate the things of God. Although you cannot see them, feel them, touch them, they still exist. Close your eyes for just a moment, everybody. Although you cannot see this Bible, because you said you would close your eyes for me, it doesn't mean this Bible does not exist. I'm holding a Bible in my hand. But the only way for you to substantiate it is to, come on, open your eyes. And there it is. God does not operate that way. Whether one sees it or not, it still is there. And the beauty, the beauty of it lives inside my heart. God is a reality. Will you just say that out loud from your heart? Say, my God, my God is, is a reality. Powerful words. Because faith, now faith, is the substantiation of things in which he's promised and things in which I hope for and the evidence of things which I have yet not to see. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fact. Did you see it? Hello, did you see it? Even those who saw it didn't believe it. Jesus Christ is a historical fact. And those who walked with him, those who ate with him, those who prayed with him still did not believe that he was real and who he said he was because when he was crucified, everybody walked away from him. Why? Because they did not substantiate who he was here but his mama. There's people listening to the sound of my voice that thinks because you go to church on Sunday that for some reason you have substantiated Jesus Christ. And you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong because the five senses cannot substantiate faith. You can't even learn about faith by listening to me because your ears are polluted and your ears are corrupted. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Can I hear a big fat amen? How about one more? I am enjoying myself so much up here. Can you tell? How can you tell? How have I substantiated that to you? 
huh? Do you feel something? Do you know what I feel like up here? Do you know how I feel right now? I'm substantiating the presence of God right now. Why? Because I can barely stand on my own two feet. Amen. She is hearing every word. Matthew 16. Verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do common men, common men, say that I say that I the Son of Man am? Verse 14, and he said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, and some say you are Elias. Others say you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, Jesus said, But who do you say that I am? In verse 16, come on, read it with me. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Wait a minute. That's not saying that he is just a person. It's not like saying, You are Anita. No. Christ means the anointed one. He says, you are the anointed one. Huh? The son of the living, not dead, living God. Come on, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, would you please read it with me? It makes me very happy. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee but by my Father which is in heaven. He said, my reality was not substantiated by feet, nose, sight, hands, or anything. It was substantiated by faith. Look at John chapter 20. We all know the story of doubting Thomas. Doubting, doubting, doubting Thomas. We've all been doubters, haven't we? Huh? Huh? Three of you said, yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord, I've been a doubter. Verse 25, it says in John 20, 25, and Jesus, um, is he, are we at the right one? John 20, 25. Oh, wow. You're usually right on the ball there, brother. All right. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's going to blame it on me somehow. I know that. All right. I just want to tell you something just before we read this. A week before this happened, right, the Lord uh, was, he, Thomas was told that the Lord rose from the dead. And if you read all the scriptures, you'll see that for the whole week, Thomas said, no way, no, it's impossible, no, how he was, a, he was, right. He, for a whole week, he did nothing but, uh, but put this resurrection down. Uh, that's what some of the people in the world do too, right? They, they just, they, they deny it, they doubt it. Okay, so for a whole week, Thomas had been really bashing, if you would, the resurrection of Christ. So here we are, fast forwarding one week later, and the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen this to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands, those prints in his hands, and put my finger into the print of the nail and thrust my hand into his side, then I will believe. Wrong, 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 wrong. Why, guys? Why? Because faith is not substantiated by sight, sound, smell, touch. Huh? Right? Jesus walked through the, the walls of this house. And Jesus walked through the walls and stood before Thomas and said, Hey, Thomas, come here. But watch this. Thomas, Thomas, 
put your hand here in my side. Stop doubting me, but believe me. And the next verse says, said to him, Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, and Thomas thrusted his hand, I'm throwing this in, in his side and said, my Lord and my God. How was his faith substantiated? Oh, wait a minute. This is not a good day for Thomas. Because the next verse says, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed. Wait a minute. Come on, read it out loud. Blessed is who have not seen and yet have believed. Oh, wow. What does that mean? What does that mean? Blessed are you who have never heard yet believed the message. Blessed are you that have never seen, but yet believe. He would say this and go further. How sorry I feel for you that in order for you to substantiate my reality, you must see, feel, touch, smell. For faith is not substantiated through the five senses. There's only one way it's substantiated. Look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse number 16. Are you learning something? Verse 16, verse chapter 13. Come on, read it out loud. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For barely I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desire to see. How, what, what does he mean, see? See. Prophets from the beginning of the age have desired to see God with their eyes closed. Look at me. Blessed are you. That word blessed means applause. Heaven applauds those who do not see with their eyes but see with their heart. Say, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. I don't need a lot of money because my eyes of my heart have seen you. Where does faith come from? Well, this part here I'm about to share with you was about 25 minutes into my shower. Yeah. I said, Lord, where does faith come from then? And my God who sees and hears and knows said these words to me. He said, faith is substantiated through the person of the Holy Spirit. Faith is substantiated, believed, confirmed, known through the I teach this, I've taught this in this room for 15 years. And you can walk out this door after church and you will not substantiate a word that I said about faith. Not a word. You have to be like her. 
who relies upon power. Not the ears. Blessed are you that have ears to hear and eyes to see. The only way you will substantiate and know that faith is real is through the person. What did I just say? This is the only place that you may get, get it. How do you know that I'm real? How do you know that I'm real? I'm a person. And he can feel, he can be grieved, he can be wounded. The Holy Spirit can be vexed because he's a person. A believer will miss this every single time until they get out of their theology and know him as a person. But I can't seem to figure that out. Now, wait a minute. You're a person. She's a person. She's a person. What, 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 and say, what does he look like? Now, if you just tell me, does he have two hands? I, I, wait a minute, wait. So she's a person. She's a person. You're telling me that the Holy Spirit is a, a person. Um, like, does he wear clothes? I, I, I need something. Can you give me a picture of him? But I can show you the effects of knowing him. I can show you the effects of knowing him. Just let me lay my hands on you for 30 seconds and you will know what I'm feeling up here right now. Well, Pastor Mike, I'm not quite sure. I can substantiate him that way and you will. First Corinthians chapter two to the close. Verse eleven. This is now where we get into the, the deep things of the spirit. First Corinthians two eleven, read it out loud for me. For what man knows the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, dwells in temples that only he has built. He builds to dwell and dwells only where he has built. And you will never know him unless he has built. Because if he does not dwell in you, it's because you have built a wall shutting him out. Thus, your experiences of God are external. And you can't understand fruitcakes like us. This is the close. Faith, Louis, is not a thing. Faith is a person. More real to me than you. Wow. He is a person. I shall not be moved by things I see or by things I feel. I am moved only by the word of the living God. He can be touched. 
He can be grieved. He can be vexed. Faith is the Holy Spirit. And it is the most miraculous gift. Spiritual victory does not depend on what you think. And whether or not you believe that I am standing here or not does not change the fact that I am. And whether or not you believe that Jesus Christ is real and the Holy Spirit is real does not change the fact that He is. Spiritual victory comes when we are led by our spiritual intuition and not our thought. Your sight your smell, your taste, your hearing, and your touch are your greatest enemy. The Holy Spirit operates radically differently. He comes to destroy. Destroy. You cannot learn about faith by listening to me. You cannot learn about faith by coming to church today. I'm so sorry. Faith is a revelation. Say, Holy Spirit. I want you to be real. More real than anything in my life. Holy Spirit, open the eyes of my heart and substantiate my faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and precious Holy Spirit, May your faith be substantiated and may the Holy Spirit magnify in your heart right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Louis, how did I do, brother?